Thank you, Raul. Just stay standing where you are. Good morning. I want to um, just pray with you before um, you sit down and, um, and just uh, want to trust God to come and work in your heart this morning. So just where you're standing, close your eyes for a second, and if you want to, just raise your hands to heaven, and let's trust for God's Spirit to blow through this place and to work in our hearts. Thank you, Father God. Oh, so expectant for what God wants to do in your lives today. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father. Would you come and blow with your Holy Spirit? Just blow through this place. I sense that there's already an atmosphere of faith and that you are going to do mighty things in our lives this morning. Thank you that you would just stir our hearts right now, Holy Spirit. Stir our faith right now to receive from you, to hear your voice. Thank you, Father God, for this incredible opportunity to just touch heaven and to receive from you. Would you open the word to us this morning through your Holy Spirit? Would you anoint the word? And thank you, Lord God, that as it, as it falls, it would be like, like a seed falling on fertile ground that will bear fruit in our lives. Come, Holy Spirit, and anoint this message, I pray. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. Have a seat. Have a seat. Good morning. Thank you, Raul. Thank you for hosting us so well to the team, and especially Richard and Jenny, um, who are absolutely incredible at hosting. Um, we've had such a great time staying with them on the farm. We've not stopped eating um, since the moment we arrived, so we'll have to have a fast after this. But it's good to be with you. Um, we come from Riversdale, which is also a farming community, and very Afrikaans, so Lef Gemeente, which is obviously Afrikaans. I normally preach in Afrikaans, so I, today I get to preach in English. I'm really excited about that. And um, I just, coming here, I realized, you know you know when you're in the Karoo, when an hour before you get to your destination, you can see your destination, right? <laughs> We were driving, I'm like, and he's like, look, there's Grafenet. I'm like, where? What, like down there? Oh, you can actually see it, and it's like an hour drive still. So this is, this is special for us, and it's, it's such a beautiful place that you live in, and we can see God's hand on you, amen? We can see, I hope you, I hope you recognize it, we can see God's hand in your community, and it's just, I, I have an excitement in my spirit and an expectation for what God is going to do further this year in your lives, and, and I, I want to stir some faith in you this morning, amen? I want to stir some expectation in you this morning for what God wants to do in your life. And um, I want to talk about the call to restoration. There is a call from heaven to receive the ministry of rest restoration from Jesus. There is a call from heaven where God wants to restore things in your life that may have been lost or stolen or broken or through whatever reason, God wants to restore. He is the God who restores. I hope you believe that this morning. I hope you believe that God can repair broken things no matter what happened. God can restore things that the enemy has stolen from you and God can restore things that you have lost maybe by accident or intentionally. Either way, God is the God of restoration. And I firmly got this word on my heart from the Lord for you. I, this is not a sermon I've even preached at home. I sense God specifically give me this word for you. And so I want to encourage you with that. Receive it as God's personal message to you this morning. Are you ready? Okay, okay. There's some expectation in this block. Uh, is this block ready? Okay, come on. Is that block ready? Christy, come on. Are you ready? Are you receptive? Are you hungry? You need, to, you need to receive the message this morning in faith. This is so important. Everything that God does in our lives, we receive by faith. If there is an expectation, if there's a hunger, if there's a longing for it, you will receive what God has for you. All right, let's dive into God's Word. This is a passage in 2 Kings chapter 6 that I want to just speak out of, and it's an odd passage to preach from, but it, it teaches us some valuable, valuable lessons. Let's read what it says, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 1 to 7. It says, The company of the prophets said to Elisha, Look, the place where we meet with you is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan, where each of us can get a pole, and let us build a place there for us to meet. And he said, Go. Then one of them said, won't you please come with your servant? I will, Elisha replied. And he went with them. They went to the Jordan and began to cut down trees. As one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. Oh no, my Lord, he cried out. It was borrowed, the man of God asked. Where did it fall? 
when he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick and threw it there and made the iron float, lift it out, he said. Then the man reached out his hand and took it. And so this is such a beautiful story of the power of God, the supernatural power of God, being able to restore things that otherwise would have been impossible. And that's the God you and I serve. We need to know him that way, and we need to know his ministry of restoration in our lives. And we need to believe firmly, without any doubt in our hearts, that he can restore the broken, the lost, and the stolen things in our lives. Even today, even things that were perhaps stolen and lost many, many years ago. And this is the first point. God specializes in the business of restoration. This is what he is really, really good at. God is able, more than able, to do exceedingly, abundantly more than we can ask, think, or imagine. And this is especially true for us when it comes to brokenness in our lives, things that were lost, and things that were stolen. Uh, for, for those of you who have a house and like fixing things and painting things, um, you, you'll be able to relate that in the, you know, when we, we started painting and fixing our house back in Riversdale, we were really excited, you know, we're going to paint it this color, and then you go to the shop and you buy paint, and you, you, know, you realize you need to take a loan out just to buy the drum of paint, you know, and, and so your excitement sort of starts to wane a bit, and, but you get going, you start painting, and at some point you run out of energy, and eventually I get a painter in to finish the job, but, you know, I thought we're going to renovate this place nicely, you know, scrape out all the cracks, you know, make sure it's clear, fill it up with polyfiller, you know, smooth it over nicely, do it properly, right? And all of that is done, and then you know, you're like happy and really proud of the way the house looks. And then six months down the line, the cracks just reappear in the wall. And you're like, what was all that for? You know, you went through all that effort, and the cracks are there. And no matter how much cosmetic work you do to the house, at some point, you need to get a professional in to come and actually do sort of the hard graft, the hard labor of breaking down and cutting down and, and getting into the, the, the foundation of the, of the house, you know, getting into the brickwork. And, and we love watching those renovation shows where those guys go in and, and, you know, just transform a house. And they don't just go in there and clad a wall and paint something. They go in there and they completely demolish entire rooms, you know. They completely destroy parts of the house and then rebuild from scratch. Because they know you can't just cosmetically treat something and then hope to get good results. And in a way, it parallels in the spiritual in our lives is that we often try in our own strength and in our own wisdom and ability to fix things and to restore things in our lives and to get back what we've lost in our own wisdom. And, and so often it just fails. As people, we need to realize that we need an expert in the restoration business. We need to call on the God of heaven to come and restore the things that the enemy stole from us that he took from us things that are valuable. We need to call on the God of heaven to restore the things that we lost by accident or even intentionally. We need to call on the God of heaven who is an expert in restoration to come and repair the broken parts of our lives. He is the God who specializes in restoration. In fact, the ministry of Jesus, the first thing he comes to preach in Luke chapter 4 is all about that. He introduces himself to the Jews there and, and reads from the book of Isaiah 61. And this is what Jesus reads. In Luke 4, verse 18 to 19, the Bible says, Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. So this is what I've been anointed for, he says, to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. God is a God who can restore hope in a hopeless situation. Amen? Come on, somebody needs to hear that this morning. God is a God who can restore hope in a hopeless situation. South Africans, we need to trust God to restore hope in our hearts for this nation. Amen? Instead of the negativity and the doubt and the fear is to ask God, God, give us back hope for our nation. God is the God who comes and brings good news to those who have lost all hope to the poor. He's come to restore freedom to those who have been held captive by sin and addiction and the world. He comes to restore that freedom. Freedom Church, do you desire freedom in your life? Do you long for it back where the enemy may have taken it or where sin has maybe stolen it from you? 
God is the God who restores freedom. He restores sight to the blind, opening our eyes to see him once again, to see the truth in his word. Some of you here this morning have maybe been struggling reading the Bible and you just can't see what it says. You can't understand the meaning. God wants to restore sight, spiritual sight. He wants to open the eyes of your heart that you may know him. Have you got faith for that this morning? Because like the axe head that fell in the water, it was essential for the building of that house. And the prophet knew this. And sometimes we lose things and we don't realize that those things are actually essential to building healthy marriages, healthy families, a healthy spiritual life, for, for building a healthy church family, healthy, a healthy community. And we need to urgently ask God to restore those things in our lives. Freedom Church, do you serve a God who is able to restore the things that have been lost or broken or stolen? Do you believe that this morning? Someone here this morning may be walking with extreme fear and doubt. You know, you've been trod down and you've been stepped on and you've been lied to by the devil. And God wants to restore your faith in him. Maybe you've been battling all sorts of struggles and, and difficult circumstances and negativity in your life and in your family, and it's robbed you of your passion for God. Maybe you've lost your joy in all of it, you know, because of the, the hardships of life. God wants to restore these things in our lives. Maybe you've lost your courage just to, to, to step into the things that God has for you, your courage to share your faith with people. God wants to restore that courage. Maybe you've lost a, a good friendship, you know, a good friend because of a misunderstanding or because of some kind of pain or whatever happened, some kind of bitterness that developed. God can restore broken friendships. Maybe you've, you know, you've been longing to speak to your children again who've been distant from you, or maybe there's a brokenness in your family, in your relatives. God can restore those broken relationships. You need to believe that this morning. God is pleased when we have faith in Him. It's impossible to please God without faith, the Bible says. Hebrews 11 verse 6. It's impossible to please God without faith. He who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is the rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Faith is the key that unlocks God's gifts and God's restoration in our lives. Do you believe this morning that he can do it? Come on, church. I want to stir your faith this morning. I want you to walk out here with a faith lift, not a face lift, a faith lift. All right, you can go to the doctor for a face lift, but I sense there's a need for a faith lift in the house this morning. Some of you need that this morning. God is a God of restoration. When we... When we look through the Bible, we see this all throughout Scripture. If we look at Joseph's life, he was in a, in a happy family environment. His dad loved him, and he was kind of the favorite at home, you know. But his brothers hated him and were jealous of him and eventually had had enough of him because he was a, he was a talker. He liked to talk about himself. And they threw him in a pit, and eventually they sell him as a slave to some guys passing by. You know, imagine your, your, your brothers and sisters selling you as a slave. How low is that, Right? And poor Joseph goes through hardship upon hardship in Egypt, and eventually God restores him, and he's in a prominent position in Egypt. And it, the story could have just ended there, you know. He's like second to, to, to Pharaoh. He's doing really well for himself. God has restored him. No, no, God goes and restores those broken family relationships that he, he dragged with him into Egypt, brings his brothers, they hug each other, they cry on each other's shoulder. There is restoration that takes place. God can restore your broken family relationships. Do you believe that this morning? He can restore the children that have become distant from you. Are you trusting for that this morning? Job lost virtually everything. Job was unfortunate to be in sort of the, the middle of an, an, a bit of an argument between God and the devil, you know, and, you know, to prove that he really loves God and really serves God, God said to Satan, go ahead and destroy his life. And basically Satan goes and takes everything from him in a sweeping moment. One day, all his children die, all his livestock are gone, his wealth, and he was very wealthy, the Bible says. And he goes through hell on earth, literally, but at some point, God steps in and God begins to restore him. And the Bible says God didn't just give him back what he had. Listen to this. God gave him back double what had been taken from him. This is, this is who God is. He's not just the God who says, oh, I'll restore that and, and to the number. No, no, he says, I'll do that and even more. 
because God is able to do more than able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ask or think or imagine. Is your faith in this place stirred for that? Are you ready to receive from God the restoration that He wants to bring in your lives? Come on, church. It's very quiet in this Dutch Reformed church. I need some, I need some, I need some faith to be stirred here. The first, service, the first service was ready. I hope the second service is ready. God is already busy moving in your heart just as you sit there. Just as you sit there, He's stirring you. And as I was thinking about driving here, seeing Grafrenet at a distance, and I just realized that's for, for someone here this morning, as, as we were worshiping, God showed me that picture, and He said to me, some of you are on the journey, and the journey feels so long, and you've been waiting so long for a breakthrough. Keep your eyes on Him. He's in the, it's in the distance. The breakthrough is coming. The healing is coming. The, the, the transformation is coming. Don't lose faith. The journey is long. The journey may be painful. The answer is ahead of you. Keep driving. Keep the faith. Keep trusting. Keep praying. Amen. So that's for someone this morning. You know, not only does God restore people's, you know, relationships and wealth that has been lost, but He even restores gifts and things in people that were lost due to their own foolishness. Samson he is gifted with incredible strength, and the Bible says he single-handedly destroys the Philistines until he falls for the wrong woman. He, he ends up liking the wrong girls, and you know, because of his own foolishness, he ends up a slave of the, of the enemy, of the Philistines. His eyes have been gouged out. He's in chains. He's been tied up. He, he gets made a mockery of, and in fact, they drag him into one of their parties you know, to sort of to make him the entertainment of the party. And the Bible says in one last moment, you know, Samson prays, God, would you restore my strength to me? And in that moment, he's standing between two pillars, and the Bible says he, with the last bit of, of strength that God comes to restore, he basically flattens the building, taking out all of his enemies, including himself. And that's just the grace of God that even though he had messed up, it was Samson's fault, his own fault. He was the stupid one in the story. It's his fault that this happened, and still God says, in spite of that, I will restore your strength to you. And you may have messed up somewhere down the line and you feel, you know what, that, that was my gift back then, something that I've, I've given away. I've, I've given away my innocence. I've given away my purity. I've lost it. I've thrown it away. God can restore that in spite of your mistakes. That's for someone here this morning. We see Israel regularly messing up. They become rebellious. They walk away from God. They worship idols. These are the kinds of people that you think, you know, God, just give up on them already. You know, they don't deserve your grace. And yet, even though they get taken into exile, they get punished for their sinfulness, God says, I will restore you. I am gracious. I will restore you. He says in Jeremiah 30, verse 17 to 18, he says, I will restore you to health. He says, and heal your wounds, declares the Lord. I will restore the fortunes of Jacob's tents and have compassion on his dwellings. The city will be rebuilt on her ruins and the palace will stand in its proper place. God doesn't just restore them as a nation. He restores their health, their physical bodies, their well-being, their houses, their wealth, their farms, their cattle, their livestock. He restores the city. He restores the government. He restores the palace. Because God is the God, not of just a, he doesn't just renovate, right? He doesn't just put some polyfiller in the cracks. God just bashes down the whole building and starts fresh. And then he puts a much better building in place because that's the God we serve. I hope that's the God you serve this morning. Come on, Freedom Church. That's the God we serve. He renovates, He restores, He fixes. And there's a call from heaven, the call from heaven for you to receive the ministry of Jesus, the ministry of restoration this morning. There, there needs to be faith in your heart for it though, but there's a call from heaven. God urgently wants to restore some axes that have fallen, that have been lost. This morning, God wants to encourage you. And God can restore you in spite of your bad decisions and mistakes. That's the next point. God can restore you in spite of your bad decisions and mistakes. In spite of how many times you've messed up. He loves you deeply and he can restore you in spite of that. You know, one of the people in the Bible that I find puzzling is Peter. Peter is this loud mouth kind of, you know, he would just, he's impulsive, he was impulsive. 
And I'm kind of the opposite personality of Peter, but he was this impulsive personality. And, and you know, when, when Jesus prophesied that they would all, you know, leave him in, in the worst possible moment, Peter pipes up and says, I will never leave you, you know, I'll never forsake you. I will never deny you, Jesus. I'm your guy, you know. And then at Jesus' arrest, he's the guy who ends up denying that he even knows the man three times, Right. Imagine the guilt, imagine the shame that this guy walks with. I mean, the rooster crows and he knows what he's done wrong. I'm sure after that point, he never wanted to hear a rooster ever again. I doubt that he ever lived on a farm because he would have hated that sound. <laughs> that would have reminded him every time of what he had done wrong. And some of you are facing the same roosters in your life. You're facing the things that just keep reminding you. And the enemy keeps using that to guilt you and to shame you and to keep you down. God says, no, I want to restore you. Don't stay there. And Jesus comes alongside Peter and he's having breakfast with the disciples on the beach. And then he, he pulls Peter aside and he says, come along. And he restores the relationship. He comes and he pours out grace on Peter. And he restores him to be once again the leader, the apostle of the church that he was called to be. And this is the guy that you would have thought, you know, forget about Peter, guys. Let's move on. If you were his board member or ministry advisor, you'd say, Jesus, don't pick him. Let's find somebody else. You know, this is before you go to heaven. Let's just pick some new disciples, right? No, no. Jesus says, no, I want you. I want to restore you. I want to transform your life because you will look back and you will not take credit for what, what's been done. You can't say, oh, I, I did a, a, you know, a help, a 10-step self-help program or I read a great book, you know, to be the road to a better me or anything like that. You can't take any credit for it because only God can do that. Amen? He can restore. Romans 8, 28, the famous verse we love to read. It says, and we know that God, not me, God causes everything to work together. Not the government, not the economy, not my finances. God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love him, those who are called according to his purpose. Are there some people here this morning in Freedom Church who love God? Do you love God this morning? Come on, there's got to be some, some exaltation. Love is visible. Love is visible in your, in your praise and worship to God right? In your, in your rejoicing in Him. Can you delight in Him? When you wake up in the morning, just say, God, I love you. God, I desire you. When last did you just say that to Him, right? God, I love you. I long for you. It's got to be a love in us, and it's for those people that God says, I will work it together for the good. It doesn't matter what you've been through. It doesn't matter the broken stuff that you carried into this place. Maybe you knew this morning, and you're like, man, I don't deserve that. You don't. You're right. But by the grace of God, but by the goodness of God, you can. By the goodness of God, there can be healing and restoration in your life. That's for someone this morning. John 10.10 10 tells us that the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Jesus said, I've come to give you life, and that in abundance, overflowing life, not just, not just replacing, not just restoring what was lost, but giving back that and then some, Right? Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. That's the God we serve. Do you trust for that this morning? And the thief will lie to you. The enemy will try and convince you that you're not good enough, that you don't deserve it. You've messed up too much. Don't even bother. Don't fall for those lies, church. Don't fall for those lies. Believe God's truth over your life. Here's the next point. We need an urgent desire for restoration. There has to be a longing in us. I realized this in my own life that sometimes when I lose something or the enemy steals something from me, takes something from me or, or something is broken, I too easily accept that as just being part of life, right? Maybe you've been there too where you just, you know what, this is Christianity, it's hard, you lose things, right? The enemy sometimes steals stuff, stuff gets broken, relationships break sometimes, and then you just go on with your life, but you carry, you carry this brokenness with you, and you, you know your ax head is lying in the river somewhere, and God is like, no, 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 I want you to go back and find that ax head because it's important for the building of God's kingdom. It's important for the building of your healthy marriage. It's important for the building of your children's lives with the child blessing. We just saw that. So important that you build into your children, right? Don't lose that ax head. God will point out to your heart whatever that may be. But there must be an urgent desire. There must be a longing. I love how the prophet who was building, who lost the axe, 
he cried out, the Bible says, he cried out to Elisha, said, please help me, you know, this axe head was borrowed. I don't have a plan B. There isn't another option, and that's so important that we keep that in mind. We only have God. There is no plan B. There is no other option. We can't turn to psychology, guys. We can't turn to counseling. All those things help, right? Those things are not bad, but ultimately we need to trust in God. It's not God and counseling or God and psychology. It's God, and then maybe if you want to go for counseling, but trust for God to do the restoration. Come on. Because He can. He is able. Do you have faith for that? And is there an urgency in you to cry out for that? Are you on your knees begging God, God, I want this relationship restored? Are you trusting God to restore your health this morning, but are you desperate? Are you hungry for it? If you're not, it may never happen. God wants an urgency in us, a longing. Some, a few years ago, um, in Riversdale, a, a father drove off with his farm bucky with his daughter on the back, and, and that's normal, obviously, in farming towns. You know, the kids drive on the back, and she was standing on the bucky um, with her head towards the, the front of the vehicle. And he ro- took a route that he doesn't normally take, and he, he drove underneath one of those height restriction beams, and not realizing that she was standing, his daughter was standing in the back of the bucky at exactly the height of that beam. And he drove, and th- that beam, sorry, it's graphic, but it hit her on the back of the head, gave her a serious concussion, and sent her flying off the back of the bucky, hitting the road, right? Very, very serious accident. He realized what happened as he saw in the rearview mirror, and he heard the sound of this thing hitting her. And he got out the bucky in a, in a quick rush, you know, drove with her on his lap, drove to the near ho- nearest hospital there in town, And immediately the whole town was rallying, praying, got behind him as they were waiting for an ambulance to come from George to take her to the the hospital in Mossel Bay, the private hospital. And that's about an hour away. So it took about an hour and a half for the ambulance to come. Ambulance gets there, no respirator in the ambulance. Sorry, the doctor's like, we cannot let her go. She must be on a respirator the whole way. Okay, get another ambulance. Now the parents are getting really anxious, right? And the doctors are like, guys, you need to pray, really pray right now because her eyes are sort of falling back. She's got bleeding on her brain. There's a serious concussion. This is going to be very serious unless something gets done right now. Waiting for the ambulance. Eventually, an hour and a half later, the second ambulance arrives, loads her up. An elder and I race ahead towards Mossel Bay in the car. And the whole way there, it's about an hour. We just prayed like we'd never prayed before. There was an urgent cry that day in my bucky and as we prayed we cried out to God we sought him with every ounce of our strength and 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 we, it's like something happened in that moment something something in us broke and something in the spirit realm broke and something in the physical broke and something healed in the physical in that moment and we get to the hospital ambulance offloads her and probably to the ICU We go with the parents just to calm them down. The dad was like shaking from shock. And we pray and we just get get him, you know, to become calm and peaceful. And and eventually the neurologist rocks up and he he seems surprised that we're all so like in the state of anxiety and and sort of crying, you know, our faces are red. And and he's like, he shows up there and he seems way too relaxed and, and we, you know, anxious to hear the news. And he says, oh, no, your daughter will be fine. She has a small crack on her skull, no bleeding on the brain, no brain damage, nothing to worry about. She'll be fine. The next day, she got out of bed and started walking and talking, right? I mean, church, do you serve that God? (laughs) Is there an urgent desire in you to pray, to seek what you need in your life? Or are you just going to concede to the fact that something was lost or something was broken? You have to have an urgent desire. There's got to be something that, something births in you when you pray fervently, when you pray with fire. He can do it. There's some essential axes that I I sensed as I was praying for the church here. I felt God show me some axes that have been dropped maybe and that God wants you to pick up again. And the first axe that may have been lost is faith. Faith is such a crucial part of our journey with God. We must trust Him as children do, trust their parents for every single thing that we need. Amen? And especially right now in South Africa, I sense there's a a lot of cynicism. People are cynical 
and negative and doubtful about South Africa, and even with the elections coming up, and we need to replace that cynicism with, with words of faith. Amen? Maybe you've lost your faith to trust God for your finances, for your children, for your health. Where does God need to restore faith in your life? To believe in Him for the impossible. The second thing that I sense God say He wants to restore in you, Freedom Church, is passion for Him. Right? A passion and an earnest longing and a desire for Him. A passion for prayer. A passion for His Word. Once again, He wants to restore that passion in you. And I know when the hard knocks of life come, and COVID really did that to us, it robbed us of our passion, right? It's put us into survival mode, amen? Come on, let's be honest. It's put us into maintenance mode. And God says, no, 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 I want my church to be passionate once again. I want them to rise up and to, and to proclaim boldly what, what the Word says, to believe in me boldly for the impossible. God wants to stir your passion again. Maybe sin has caused you to lose that passion. You need to repent of that sin. The, the third thing is joy. God wants to restore some joy in the church this morning. Maybe it's your circumstances or a broken relationship that, that's robbed you of your joy. Maybe it's just neglect where you've not been in the presence of God. Pastor Innocent preached last week about making an, a, a time where you can tabernacle with God, right? Where you can be in His presence. I hope you took that message to heart because you need that space, church. You need that where your, your faith can be refired and where your joy can be re stirred up again. That in spite of circumstances, in spite of what you see around you or the pain in your body, that the Holy Spirit can produce that fruit in you, that joy in you that is missing. The world looks at the church and they want to see, are these people actually happy to serve the God that they proclaim is so good? And I don't know sometimes when I look at my church back home and, and even at my own face in the mirror, I'm like, I'm not sure if my face tells the whole story. Come on, some of you need to hear that this morning, right? If, if there's joy on the inside and you sang about that this morning, which is fantastic, I mean, tell your face that, right, when you get up in the mornings. I, I am redeemed. I have been set free. I am a child of God. My name is written in heaven. I am the head and not the tail. I have been restored by the precious blood of Jesus, right? I have a future. A God has a hope for my life. There, there, there is nothing that the enemy can do to me because I've been covered by the blood of the Lamb. He crushed the snake under his feet. Come on, somebody in this place. Jesus is my King. He's my Lord. He's on the throne. Come on, someone. And, and as you proclaim that, sense the joy rising up in you once again that the enemy may have stolen. Some joy needs to come back. And a final thought, a final verse, Psalm 51, verse 12, the, the psalmist says, restore to me. He's just been through sinful, difficult passion in his life, and he's been rebuked by God. He's been, God has really given him some discipline, and he, he took Bathsheba to be his wife, which was obviously a horrible thing he did. And then he goes through a period of repentance, and then he says to God, restore to me the joy of your salvation, and make, make me willing to obey you. He says, give me a willing spirit. Restore the joy in me that was once there. Sin tends to do that. It, 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 it tends to break down the joy in our lives. And oftentimes the enemy will heap guilt and shame on that to make it worse and to keep you there. Can I tell you something, child of God? You are not meant to stay in the dust. You're not meant to peck around like a chicken in the, in, in the stof. Kom uit die stof uit. Rise up. You were called to rise up on wings like eagles. Some of you need to, to hear that this morning. Stop groveling in self-pity. Stop groveling and feeling sorry for yourself. God's not called you to, to grovel in self-pity. He says, rise up out of that. I want you to soar with me on wings like eagles. Amen, 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 amen. This, 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 this one phrase that struck me in our passage in 2 Kings chapter 6, and then we'll close. And, and, and the, the prophet says to, to, Elisha says to the prophet, where did it fall? Where did the ax head fall? And this is so important. Recently, I... You know, starting the year financially, it was a challenge back home and in our church, and I was feeling the pressure, and, you know, it, it, immediately I knew I need to trust God. I need to stir my faith in this time because it, it, it's going to get negative real fast if I don't. And, and so I began to just trust God, and even the Lord challenged me to give generously to people even when I was battling. So I was doing that, 
And then at some point, I become negative and, and doubtful and fearful even, and, and it became clear in my conversations with people, and, and the Holy Spirit put it on my heart, and then my wife also, right, men, that's why we need wives, it's just to point out some things that we may have overlooked, amen? And the, the wives are amening, but the men are not. It's okay, you'll, you'll get it. And, and I, I realized, yes, it's true, Lord. I, I started the year well. I started trusting Him. There was faith. And, and then I, and I read this passage, and I read that phrase, and the Lord said to me, where did you lose it? Where did you drop it? Where did you drop your faith? And I said, Lord, help me see that. Help me discern where I dropped it. And the Lord took me back to where I changed the way I was speaking. And I was no longer speaking words of faith, but words of doubt. I was talking about the economy, right? The state of the economy, oh, the cost of living, oh, the people are struggling, you know, oh, there's no money. Looking at the statements and the figures and saying, you know, this is just the way it is. We're going to just, you know, we're going to tough it out, right? South Africans, we're tough, right? We're going to get through this. But that's not faith language. Come on. That's not faith language. That's fear. That's doubt. And God said to me, where did it fall? Where did you drop your faith? And I said, Lord, I'm so sorry. I repent of that. I repent of speaking words of doubt. And as I did that, I felt God begin to restore my faith. And you may need to just return. Don't, don't, don't camp there. Don't dwell in the past. But you may need to just go back a second and say, Lord, where did the relationship break down? Or where did the joy disappear in my life? Where did I lose my passion? God, I, I want you to show me where that is. And then go back and repent of that. Go back and forgive somebody that's hurt you. And let him do the work of restoration in you. But you must sometimes identify where it fell, where you messed up, and then repent. Forgive. Come back. Believe once again. Let's close our eyes as we pray. And as we just press into what the Holy Spirit wants to put on our hearts. You've got your own battles to fight and you may have lost something that I didn't even mention today. You may have lost your purity today. You may have lost your innocence today, not because of something you did, but because people took it from you. This morning, the Holy Spirit is ready to restore innocence and purity in your heart in spite of the physical abuse that you've been through. This morning, the Holy Spirit wants to restore and renew you in that. Yes, there's maybe some, some of you here who need to hear that. And God says it's not your fault. It wasn't your fault. Come and receive the healing and the restoration. Maybe your faith has been dropped of late. As you sit with your eyes closed, just ask the Lord, how's my faith in you? Am I believing for, for the supernatural? Am I trusting you for, for a breakthrough in my life? Maybe you've dropped that somewhere. You need to go back and just point that out and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Speaking words of faith again, walk, restore me to live, walk in faith and not by sight. Maybe you've dropped your passion somewhere down the line and you've grown tired, you've grown complacent in your relationship with God and you've become even just a, a bit lazy. And God says, no, come back. Where did you drop it? Where did you lose that? God says, come back to me. I want to restore that in you. Fervently pray again. Read God's word again. Seek his face. Come back to the, maybe you've lost your joy because of the, the, the difficulties in your life, the pain you've been through, the loss of a loved one or whatever the case may be. God says, I want to turn your mourning into dancing. I want to give you a garment of praise instead of the spirit of heaviness, the oil of joy instead of mourning today. Jesus comes to restore those things as you turn to Him. Whatever you've lost this morning, maybe it's wealth, maybe it's money, and God is like, I want to restore that in your life. As you go back and look at where it fell, maybe you went to make unnecessary debt, buy things you don't need that, that you can't afford. Maybe you've been walking in, in, in disobedience, not sowing into where God says you should sow. Go back, where did it fall? Repent from that. Maybe somebody hurt you and there's a broken friendship or relatives that, that the relationship is awkward and sticky and you, you don't know what to do. Go back to where it fell. Say, God, I'm sorry. I forgive the, the, what they did to me and I ask for forgiveness for what I did. Wherever you are right now, let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Let Him open, expose those things in your life. He does that in a loving way. 
He doesn't do to judge you or to hurt you. Allow him just to speak to you this morning. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Would you come? Sion Akimi Korolorende, would you come and move through this place? Blow through this place and just minister in hearts. So much healing that's taking place. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Restoring joy, restoring joy. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Would you begin that right now in every heart as you receive in faith? Let Him restore you, let Him heal you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So good. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Just where you are, would you give those things, those needs to God and say, God, restore it. God, I want back. I want to take back what the enemy stole from me. I want it back. Be audacious in your faith this morning. Say, God, I want it back. Let there be an urgency in your spirit this morning as you pray. Say, God, I want it back. I want my joy back. I want my passion back. I want my faith back. God, I want, I want my, my, my love for people back. My trust in people. I want to have healthy friendships and relationships back this morning. Just where you are, begin to extend that prayer to God. God, I want it back. Let there be an urgency in you. Let there be a hunger and a desire in you this morning. God answers faith. He doesn't answer to restore that in our hearts this morning. Thank you. Let's just linger for a moment and let the Holy Spirit work. Let's give Him some space to do what He needs to do in us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We're not in a hurry. Thank you, Lord God. Do what you need to do in us. We surrender. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you. Some of you here are sensing that you feel so unworthy to approach the throne of grace. I want to encourage you this morning. It's a throne of grace. It's not a throne of condemnation. It's a throne of grace. So the Bible says, come boldly before the throne of grace and say, God, forgive me. I'm so sorry. Don't stand at a distance. Don't allow your sin to stand between yourself and God. Come to Him. Receive His forgiveness. Receive His grace. Thank you, Jesus. There we go. Thank you. Some of you are making that step even right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Would you move? Would you move in every heart? We thank you, Jesus. Oh, sayonara kimi korlo rende kona kama kimi. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, oh, holy God, we thank you. Thank you for your thank you for your move. Thank you for your work. Heal every heart here today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. You are the, the expert, the master renovator. Come and restore, Lord. Come and heal. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Won't you just speak the holy name of Jesus over your life this morning? His name is holy. Thank you, Jesus. We speak your name, Lord Jesus, over depression right now. We speak your name over depression. Depression be broken in the name of Jesus. We speak your holy name, Jesus, over doubt and fear. Jesus, we speak your name over negativity, cynicism. Thank you for, for we can speak your name right now over those things, Jesus. Thank you that you restore and heal and make new. Thank you, Jesus. We speak your holy name, Lord God, over sickness and disease in Jesus' name. We speak your holy name over those things over every bit of brokenness in, in, in physical bodies right now. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you need to hunger for God, for the healing you desire. Say, God, I want to be healed. I'm desperate to be healed. I don't accept the sickness in my body right now. Just where you are, would you receive that in faith? Thank you, Jesus. We speak your name over every infirmity, pain in some bodies here this morning, pain, you will leave right now. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke you. You will have no place in people's bodies right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for pain leaving right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Pain leaving right now. Healing flooding this place. Everybody healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Here this morning, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is here to touch you. Would you receive what He has for you? And even if you walk far from Him this morning, You've been in, on your own mission, doing your own thing. You sense Him prompting you. Say, coming back, come back to me. I love you. You sense that prompting and you know you've been rebellious. Come back to God this morning. He is your creator. He knows you. He loves you. He made you, knit you together in your mother's womb. 
and He sent His only Son to walk as a human on earth. He died on the cross. He was raised in your life, and He conquered death and hell and the grave. He conquered your sin, and He offers you forgiveness in Jesus' name. And you need to come in faith this morning and give your life to Him. If you know that that's you, if you know you've been walking far from God, and you say, Simon, I am ready to give my life to Jesus. I make that decision. Would you be bold this morning and raise your hand? If you're ready to make a decision to give your life to Jesus, raise your hand up high. Anybody here this morning that wants to make that decision? Thank you, Jesus. Well, Father, I wanna just close in this moment as you're moving, Lord God. I sense that afterwards some people will need to come for prayer, some, some further ministry will need to happen, Lord. Let that happen as you see fit, Lord God. I pray that people who need to come forward for prayer won't leave after the service. They won't be afraid, Lord. Give them the boldness they need. Thank you, Father, that you teach us to walk now, Lord God, by faith and not by sight. Lord, teach us to walk in the restoration and the healing that you've begun in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that you seal whatever you've done in this place, that the enemy cannot touch it in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you that you restore finances and wealth that has been stolen in the mighty name of Jesus. As we apply honest business practices, as we start to pay off debt, as we start to clear those, those, those inconsistencies in our books, as we begin to pay our tax, Father, as we become honest, as we become generous givers, Father, would you restore finances that have been lost in this place, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Come on, church. Can we rejoice in God? Amen, amen, amen. God is good. Thank you so much, church. If you need prayer afterwards, there'll be a team and I'll be here. We'd love to pray with you.